Hello and welcome back to The Foundation Presents. I'm your host, Mike Schramm, a board member of the Foundation for West Hartford Public Schools, a private nonprofit established to expand upon the existing curriculum within the West Hartford Public School system. Today we've got a total of six guests, two teachers and four students, to talk about the program Bits and Bytes, where computer science students at Connard team up with computer science students at the Smith School and the high school students teach the elementary school students all about coding. It's extremely interesting and I hope that you'll enjoy it. And now I'd like to welcome on Jackie Coricelli, a math and computer science teacher at Connard, as well as two of her students, Eleanor and Rachel. Jackie, we're here to talk about the Connard Club Bits and Bytes. Mm -hmm. Can you talk with me about the history of the club and how the foundation is involved in that? Sure. Uh, the club's been around for about five years. Uh, we work with fourth grade elementary school t students at Smith STEM Elementary. Um, the foundation stepped in to help us when we needed buses to be able to transport our mentors to work with the Smith STEM Elementary. Uh, students and because of the the grant they allowed us to be able to continue this relationship. So this program has existed for a while of Conard and Smith partnered mm -hmm. up. Um, how was it born? Oh gosh, uh, about five years ago um, when I started teaching computer science I noticed at the high school level part of the reason why students perhaps weren't signing up for the course was that they were afraid of computer science. So um, a bunch of the students and myself sort of brainstormed about how neat it would be if we could get to helping students even before they would start to have a fear of it or they would feel like they couldn't or shouldn't do it. So that's where the kind of the start of the course came from was these students who have uh, this newfound respect or appreciation or just they really love working with kids bringing the idea of computer science and, and that it's not at all scary, that it's fun and amazing so that these younger students can, can learn about it. Well, that's great. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> Eleanor and Rachel, you both have been involved in the club for a couple of years. Can you mm. talk to me about your experiences with the club, what got you involved, uh, and how you feel about working with the fourth graders at Smith? Um, so I was involved when I was a sophomore and I'm a senior. And um, it was that Rachel kind of was like, why don't you come with me to one of the meetings? And what really like attracted me to it was being able to form a relationship and work with the younger children that we get to work with. They're um, Most of them are around nine years old and they're fourth graders. And they're super enthusiastic and it's just a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, for me, I also started so sophomore year and um, I took my first computer science course that year and I was really interested in the subject and that's why I joined the club. Um, but it really stands out because of getting to work with the kids. Yeah. So you've got to really know your stuff if you're going to be teaching computer science to someone who's in fourth grade and maybe has never worked in computer science at all before. Was that nerve-wracking when you first joined the club? Is it still nerve-wracking now? How do you feel about the teaching aspect of it? Um, so before I joined Bits and Bytes, I had absolutely no computer science background at all. Uh, right now I'm taking actually my first computer science class this year. It's called Computer Science Principles and it's an AP course and Mrs. Corcelli teaches it. Um, but anyway, so I had no background at all um, and the structure of it is that we work w at Connor together collaboratively mm -hmm. and we've kind of got a diverse background of kids, even like math level, even I've taken mm -hmm. different math classes. So we really like set the plan up at Connor and I think the most important skill isn't the topics, because I think we can pick those up, it was learning how to communicate more effectively and learning how to teach. And I think that was a really precious skill that I learned. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Rachel? Yeah, I think definitely for me, um, going into it, I'd never really worked with kids or anything like that before, so I was worried about being able to do that. But um, yeah, working with other Connard students at Connard to prepare how we were going to teach them uh, definitely helped. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, Jackie, when I was a student at Conard, which was, I don't know, 10 years ago or yeah, so, yeah. there was not much in the way of computer science. There were a few courses, not a lot of kids took them. Mm -hmm. I, to my knowledge, there were no after-school clubs, maybe there mm -hmm. was one. Uh, but certainly, we've seen a huge growth in computer science mm -hmm. and STEM in general over the last few years. Yep. 
Can you talk to me about how this program dovetails with the growth in computer science interest in the West Harbor Public Schools or in Conard more broadly? Um, yeah, I mean, I feel like Conard is an amazing school and West Hartford is an amazing district that um, computer science as a field has a fear factor. So much so that across the country, only 20% of females participate in the AP Computer Science A exam. Mm. Um, there are some states that don't send a single minority to take that exam. Wow. Entire states. Wow. So at Conard, we saw that as an equity problem. And not just me, not just the teachers, and not just the administration, but the students mm -hmm. wanted to do what they could to fix it. Mm -hmm. Um, I think Bits and Bytes is an example of students working together to make sure that, at least at Conard, everybody feels like they have a way that they can learn computer science, that there's a course someday for them, and for the students that are in Bits and Bytes, there's a way that they can learn it right now. Mm -hmm. Anyone can and should learn computer science, and I think that it's become just a movement in our school. Mm -hmm. um, Bits and Bytes is, they're just an amazing group of young, young people that understand about this equity issue and they want to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think that that sentiment develops this ball of energy around it and I absolutely think that that can become contagious. Um, yeah. Yeah. You know, it certainly seems like you've got a lot of momentum, a lot of mm -hmm. wind at your back with this program, and it's been going strong for five years, yeah. and uh, I, I'm amazed that it was going so strong independent of any sort of funding for a number of years yeah. before you approached the foundation, and, and this is the kind of program that we really like to get involved with and support Thank because you. the number one thing that, that we would like to get involved in is programs with motivated teachers and motivated students. And, and that seems to be uh, a part of the problem is how do you tap into the different motivations of the different players involved. And I can't help but notice that we've got two female students who are involved in the club. And like you said, computer science as a field tends to be dominated by men. And I think mm -hmm. that it's great that you are starting with kids in high school and then bringing them mm -hmm. and, and their passions into the elementary school setting to inspire kids who maybe wouldn't have any sort of exposure to this kind of cor coursework and these kind of opportunities for long-term interests and careers. Uh, I think that is really, really exciting. Thank you. Um, can you tell me a bit about what you guys do with the fourth graders when you're with them? Are you teaching them coding? Are you working with them on, uh, I don't know, something else related to computer science? I'm betraying <laughs> my ignorance in the subject here. Yeah. That's okay. Um, do you want me to talk about this for a little bit? Okay, so our first lesson this year was a visit in October, mm -hmm. correct? Yeah, okay. So it was a visit in October, and um, our goal was kind of to focus more on making sure everyone was comfortable there, because it's mm -hmm. a lot about this fear factor. Mm -hmm. um, so we actually didn't take out computers at all, our mm -hmm. first lesson. Hmm. So we worked on talking about some concepts uh, in algorithms and uh, some like basic principles, and so um, the sequence, selection, and iteration were our big like things that we were talking mm -hmm. about and how we express these kind of, I don't know, far away words for these kids was that we um, all folded origami puppies. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I wish we you all, had the puppy. I know, I wish I had a puppy <laughs> with me. Um, Can I ask why you made origami puppies? <laughs> well, okay, so um, last year we had just been looking at easy origami because we had had this idea mm -hmm. and so this year we kind of took it a step further and it was like the simplest origami thing and it was this idea that when I held up the puppy I had made it Connor and said guys what is this they all were like oh that's a puppy dog like everyone knew it was a puppy dog mm -hmm. but the idea was talking about how this is an abstraction and it looks like a puppy dog to us but we know this dog won't bark or wag its tail it's not real mm -hmm. which is um, a pretty enormous significant theme in computer science is abstraction um, so that was our first lesson and it was really great. It brought out a lot of themes that we felt were important and was an easy stepping stone to start talking about how we're gonna start using this on computers. Rachel, do you wanna talk about the actual computer program we use? Yeah, so when we actually do get on computers with them, we use um, a program called Scratch, mm -hmm. which is um, 
designed for kids to use to learn yeah. computer science and it's like um, blocks of code that you can like click and drag to like put together the sequences and so that way it's really easy for the kids to get started and make their own things um, and we use it to teach different like concepts that are really important in computer science like abstraction and things like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Well, this sounds like a really fabulous program. I'm glad that the foundation has finally gotten involved so late in the game. No, we appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. So, so one more question before we go. Jackie, where do you see the growth of this program in the future? Bits and bytes? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, we're hoping that, um, that this becomes sort of uh, an example, perhaps, to other districts, or perhaps it grows up where um, I don't. I don't know. Is the is the honest truth. I'm not. I'm not really sure where this could go. Mm -hmm. I know that when you have a bunch of forward-thinking young people with great ideas and a ton of inspiration, I feel like it's almost impossible to know <laughs> where where it could go. Yeah. And I, I don't. I don't know that I want to bound it. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure yeah. that if I asked you that question four years ago, you would not have said yeah. that you'd be sitting here talking to me yeah. about it right now. Yeah, yeah. So I, it seems like there is ample opportunity for growth in many directions, and yeah. I'm, I'm so impressed by the work that you all are doing. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. I really appreciate thank you. your time. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you for having us. Thank you for financing this. Yes. Of course. Yeah. We're happy to. Possible. Thank you. <laughs> And now I'd like to welcome on Allison Foley, a math specialist at the Smith School, and two of her students, Isaac and Lucy. Allison, can you talk to me a bit about your involvement in the Bits and Bytes program? Yes, well, I actually um, got to know Mrs. Coricelli, the, the liaison from Conard. Um, we started talking about how much um, we thought computer science should be part of the elementary schools, um, but it's kind of hard to fit in. We know we don't have a class for it like they do at the high school. Um, so we thought, wow, wouldn't it be great if the high school students could um, teach the elementary students a little more about computer science? What a great thing that would be. So it just started as a conversation, and um, we had some high school students really interested in it, and I got some elementary students really interested in it, and that's how it got going. And this is the fifth year of the this project. This is the fifth year, yes. So is this the only sort of computer science experience that the kids can get in the schools, or was it that way when you started? When we started, yes. We have a little bit more now because we, okay. we are a STEM school now. Um, so we do have more, a little bit more computer science um, than maybe the other, other elementary schools in town. Um, but this was a big um, way we could grow with that. So since it's not, or at least wasn't when it started, part of the traditional curriculum for the school, how do you get kids involved and interested in the program? I went to all, we have three fourth grades at our school, so I went to all three fourth grades and I just announced the whole class that we have this exciting program coming up with Conard students. And I think that was a big selling point for them. You know, they have us as teachers all day, um, but to have high school teach teachers, uh, high school students as their teachers um, was a big sell. Mm -hmm. And it's only for fourth graders. It is. It's only for fourth graders. So the fifth graders, do they have some other computer science stuff that they can be involved um, in? Or? They have other um, opportunities, yes. Okay. But this is the only opportunity with the high school students. Okay. And we, you know, our fifth graders have other special opportunities at Smith School, so we mm -hmm. wanted to provide the fourth graders with something yeah, exciting. Of, of course. Yeah. So Lucy and Isaac, are you guys excited to be in the program? Do you like it? Yeah. It's good. Good. Well, that's positive endorsements yes, right there. Yes, positive endorsements. <laughs> so can you talk to me a little bit about how Lucy and Isaac would work with the high school kids? Yes. Um, so they actually are paired up. So they have a mentor um, that comes. And they, we actually let the high school students decide the lesson plan. Hmm. So the high school students come in, and they have a plan. Um, so the high school students take over and tell the students what they have to do. And uh, the high school students teach them ways to program, and then they have to go and, and work on that. And then we there's gaps of time in between, so then they come kind of have homework assignments that they have to work mm -hmm. on, um, and then share with their high school student when they come back the next time. What kind of projects do you typically work on? Um, right now they're working on a scratch project, so they have to um, do some block coding where they have to create a sprite. Um, that sprite has to have some action to it, and they have to provide a background for it. So that's their first steps in coding and their high school students taught them how to do that but now they have to go and be creative and actually put the code in and um, finish the job. So maybe can you guys share about what your sprite is? What did you decide for your sprites? Um, for my sprite, I well, our project was mainly about a winter wonderland and I had, I think, three different sprite, sprites in my um, like in my theme, 
I had uh, a snowman, a wizard, and I think a dragon. And me and my um, me and my book buddy, we made like them move actions like like the actions move like there's like also a magic carpet. So like we had to program it to go up, and it wasn't that hard for us. It was fun, and yeah, just yeah, fun. Well, that sounds really cool. Lucy, how about you? What did you do? Mine was about these two people are like having a good time making a snowman, and then this other snow snowman comes along and then ruins it and starts throwing snowballs all over the place. I just basically had three or four people. I had to make the snowman disappear at one point, so it was kind of hard in that because once I hid in it, it was really hard to get it back because like, when you stopped it, it didn't come back, so you had to like put a show block in. Those both sound So a lot of problem difficult. solving involved, <laughs> as you can see. They, have, you know, they run into a problem and they have to figure out how to tell the computer how to fix that problem. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a, uh, an important skill. As a person who is completely <laughs> illiterate when it comes to computers, I am, I'm really impressed that you guys have these awesome projects and, and I, I'm impressed that the high school students are coming in and, and teaching these kids based on their own curriculum, which I did not realize. Yeah. So you've seen this program develop over the last five years. Yes. What are your thoughts on where it started versus where it is now? Uh, well, we fine-tuned it a bit because we learned kind of what worked and what didn't work. Um, but overall, it's been fairly consistent that you know we let the high we want the high school students to really be the leaders, and we want our fourth graders to be inspired to maybe do computer science when they get to high school and hopefully even beyond um, if that's something they choose to do. And we want to expose them early on to um, so they're not afraid of computer science and they know they can do it. Mm -hmm. uh, we want that to continue as much as we can. And this year we were lucky because um, our funding. We weren't able to do it without the foundation's funding um, because the tricky part is just the transportation. We have to get the counter students to Smith, um, which is costly. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're fortunate we were able to um, keep the program going this year because of that. Well, speaking on behalf of the foundation, we're extremely happy to be involved in this program. Good. It's the exact kind of program that we really love supporting in the schools. Great. Uh, how many times a year do the Conard students get over to Smith? They come five times a year. Okay. And then we actually, I don't even know if I told you guys this, we go to them once in the spring. So we'll take a little field trip. See, they're excited. Yeah. <laughs> um, in May, um, we go over there and um, see STEM in action at the high school Wow. Um, for a morning. So, and that's very exciting in the past when we've done that, so you'll enjoy it. Wow, well, I, I'm really <laughs> impressed. And Jackie uh, touched on this earlier in our conversation about uh, the lack of diversity in STEM fields writ <laughs> large. Are you finding that that is a problem for you in the elementary school level, or is it more of a problem of lack of opportunity to access these things later in life? <laughs> well, yeah, well, we have a very diverse school at Smith School, so um, it's not really a problem at our elementary school, but just the opportunities. Um, so this was a program that we could really provide for our students and I hope that it carries on into the future. Yeah, yeah. well, I hope that it continues on into the future as well. And if there was one thing that you could say or you guys could say to the donors to the foundation that, that helped make the transportation possible but certainly didn't help make this club possible, right. what would it be? Um, well, we would definitely just say thank you so much for um, help supporting us. We, we're lucky to be part of such a supportive district. and. Uh, we would just say thank you. What would you guys say? Me? Yeah. <laughs> Wait, what? If you were talking to somebody who, who didn't know about your this program, what would you say to them? Would you say that you liked it? Would you say that you're happy that I you get to do it? I would say it's a very fun and cool opportunity for different people. And it's fun. It's... Honestly, it's really cool, it's fun, it's, yeah, it's great. I would say if somebody wanted to, wasn't sure about doing it, I would say they should try because it's a really good program and like you get to learn a bunch of stuff about computers. Great, awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on. I really appreciate your time. All right, thank you. Well, folks, that's all we've got time for today. Thank you so much for watching. And if you'd like to learn more about these grants or support the foundation, please visit fwhps.org.